GM. Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to a, a long play video. Um, I'm floating in the clouds, as you can see. Um, I haven't done one of these for a while, and uh, I'm playing against 2100 called Y Chess. Let's hope he's not using a computer. You know, I, I'm not saying he will do, but I've come across a lot of computer cheats in the past, shall we say. And the idea of this, very strange move there, is to talk about my thought process in depth so you can understand how a grandmaster thinks and you can gain uh, sort of ideas from that. So let's have a look. He's from Singapore. He's played this very strange move A4. Now maybe not completely ridiculous because a lot of the time you might want to get control of this square. But one of the ideas you, you do when you play C5 is to try and get control of the center. And if you're faced with an odd move, what should you do? Just play, just don't get carried away. Don't take it personally. Just play good moves in return that follow the principles of chess. And my, my, my favorite kind of setup in this kind of thing is to just again control these central squares like a reversed English defense, English opening. So start of the game, I'm just gonna try to do that. I wanna get all my minor pieces developed and castle my king, like any good solid chess player would do. And now we can see the point of A4, he's supporting this bishop, which now makes it's starting to make more sense. Uh, these two moves combine actually quite well. Now, I don't really think I want to let him double my pawns, so I'm going to send this knight into the center. This is the standard reply to uh, what is called the Grand Prix or, or Bishop b5 attempts. But here, I don't really want to take the bishop because then his a-pawn becomes very good and he opens up the rook. So I'm just going to try to go back to the principle of developing and controlling those central squares. So I'm going to move my bishop here and try to keep an eye uh, on the center there. Now, if my opponent captures, I probably will capture with my pawn. When I do get double pawns, it's quite a double-edged move, but this is actually a variation I know in the Grand Prix. I'm maybe trying to argue that a4 is not that useful, but it's still making some sense the way my opponent's playing this. So we should always be thinking, this is very good practice for uh, when you're playing tournaments. You should always be thinking when it's your opponent's move about what you should be doing. Don't really get much of a chance there. <laughs> and, I'm wondering if I should push this bishop away. I, I, I kind of want to develop. And then after e5, can my knight just come in? Kind of looks all right, that. And if he defends with this one, well, I think my knight has to come here in order to castle anyway. This pawn's a little bit weak, but I should have some quite aggressive ideas. So what I'm thinking in my head is, okay, I, I want to castle and then play d5. My opponent plays this move automatically. I, I don't know if this is good or bad. This pawn could be weak, it could be strong. Probably the best move for my opponent. And I was thinking I'd just bring my knight into the center and after f4, I try and play um, something to guard this pawn. Because if I go this way, f4, my knight's a little bit sidetracked there. Uh, and I think in the center makes makes the most uh, most sense here. So let, let's, let's put it in the center. I don't think this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. So we're gonna to have to go here uh, in this position. Yeah, so you should, you know, I, I reckon everyone should try playing a tournament over the board with a longer time control. That's really the way that you're gonna improve as a chess player and get better train yourself you know against a human with a long time control those kind of things in my view work very well and um, uh, it was quite funny because Peter Sfiddler is a brilliant player but he's quite famous 
for maybe not taking as much time on the board as he should. He's always walking around. And I think he, I think he mentioned somewhere, or my friend was telling me the story that Peter, he, he had some injury or he was ill and, and he wasn't able to walk around the board when it was his opponent's move. So he had to sit at the board. And I think he went on to say the amount of stuff he saw and the, the higher standard that he played compared to his normal brilliant standard was, was massive. And I thought that was quite funny that Peter Svidler telling the story about him uh, you know, being forced to sit and concentrate. That's what you need to do in chess. Okay, so my knight is attacked. Now my first thought is to bring it here and attack his bishop. But then the bishop might drop back and he's threatening a5, trapping my knight. So here, here, I'd love to play a little discombobulator like that, but I'm not sure it works very well here. But where else does my knight go to? Now, if he takes here, I can always take on e5. It's getting quite complicated. Maybe I should go here. The bishop moves and then try to get my knight a square. Maybe I should go here. The bishop moves d6 or d5. So I can try to get this piece out. If he captures, I take with the queen. If he goes here, if my knight's here, can it even come in this way? I quite like that. I don't want to lose tempo, so this, this move is key. Tempos are important. So I, I, I want to move my knight here to, uh, to, to attack that bishop, try to gain a little tempo. And now I'm threatened by a5, so I have to do something with my knight. So I've got to make it a square. This kind of move d, d3 is actually very interesting because I want to stop my opponent developing his pieces going d3 and bishop at c1. So as well as improving my, my game, half of chess is about stopping your opponent's ideas. And this is like a pawn sacrifice I'd generally be quite happy to play. But after pawn takes, is it really worth it? Then I'm not sure. I mean, I, my original idea is go d5 and I have this square. And I, I'm going to stick with my original idea. Because now my bishop can come into the game. Uh, this knight can sort of grab this square. That's that's the main reasoning behind it. And um, I can take this pawn. I couldn't take that pawn before because that move wins a knight. Uh, and if I must, I can come back here. You know, for any any bad bad thing happens. Um, so I'm just trying to play in the center at the moment, in, including my hold of the center. Um, and giving my knight some squares it, it may well want to use in, in this position. So I'm still quite happy with my, my structure, I think. If my opponent plays f4 to guard this pawn, then I probably will be very tempted to sack that pawn. The other thing I can do against f4 is consider playing f6 because I want to get rid of this pawn. I, I don't want to let that pawn stay there. For example, if my opponent took on pass on now, after queen takes, I'd be very happy because I get rid of that pawn, which is really cramping me. And my pieces start getting a lot more freedom uh, when when that pawn pawn goes. So that's that's one thing my opponent needs to think about now. Um, so what can he do? Well, something like d3, I will take that pawn. If he goes knight takes here, I will take that pawn. And again, I think that's quite good for me. I have an extra central pawn, which, which I quite like um, in the long run. That should be good. I'm only one move from castling, like my opponent. Uh, he's got to get this bishop out. It'll take him two moves to do that. Maybe only one move to get my bishop out, but it doesn't have a very good square at the moment. I mean, I'd like to go d3 and then put my bishop into that square. And I really do like this pawn sacrifice at the right moment. It's got to be uh, at the right moment. Uh, okay, so my opponent's come on now, and I really don't want to go backwards, so this move looks correct to me. Um, now, is my opponent's idea then to play f4 with the idea that d3 causes trouble? Well, I can always take this pawn, and if this move happens, I can always come in here. So maybe it is f4. And then if I take this pawn, trying to get rid of that bishop, check. But I can castle first, and then after takes, takes. That looks all right to me. 
I'm going to go forwards. The other option is to go backwards, which actually I should have maybe thought about more because, again, it's the knight's potential which is the most important. And in actual fact, my knight here coming into c5 had a lot of potential. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't have dismissed that as quickly as I did. Okay, now I was hoping I could just block this check, which I'm going to do. And that gets rid of my this, this last piece I had trouble with and my queen is developed. So the only thing I've got to be a little bit careful of is getting my knight trapped. Um, for example, if he plays f4 and then sort of b3, which is done. So I can even consider sacrificing this guy. Now how's he going to trap my knight? He's got b3. I kind of forgot about this b3 move. And uh, my knight's a little bit, a little bit exposed, isn't it? So, can we start doing stuff like this? Well, I guess he castles. Critical position now, so I need to try and find a way out of this. The other option is to come here and try to take that pawn. But after this, he can take here with tempo. Guess then I can come queen c5, but then he comes here with tempo. And he defends everything, so that doesn't work very well. Now, f6 is not that move to try and break these up. Now, after here... It feels like I might better sack a piece for like knight takes here. But is that good enough? I don't know. How about how about f6 here and I take with a pawn? He takes here. And then we go forwards maybe with e4 in that position, something like that. Try and play d3. That could be a possibility. Um oh, it's not that clear, is it actually? So interesting play from my opponent where else can we go so f6 let's have a look b3 takes takes and I'm then thinking about playing this e4 move but I've only got one pawn for the piece it can't be enough can it so here here then I take 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 and I get a load of sexual pawns then is that enough I don't know it doesn't seem that convincing this D3 move, I can never quite get to work, can I? I don't really want to sack a P6. I feel if I can get this knight out of trouble. This moving forwards is a bit risky, actually. Forgot about this check. So how can I save this piece? Well, can I go Queen C7 so I don't run into this move and then take there? Aha. Queen C7 looks like a good move to me. Let's not play too... You know, the risky moves don't seem to work brilliantly well. So Queen C7... And then b3 I can take. Okay, let's play this move. This looks like a good move. I like this. My queen actually didn't really have any way in because of castles. On here, there's two ideas. Knight takes pawn is one. Uh, and the other idea is to... Maybe sometimes now when I take here, it's a lot better sacrifice because my bishop is threatening to take that third pawn. But I think my position is very nice if I just don't lose my knight. Because these pawns, to me, look a little bit weak because I can break them up very quickly. My opponent's behind the development um, with his bishop back there. And I think if I just don't lose my knight, then I'm doing okay in, in, in this position. So we're going to try and, uh, uh, try and avoid, avoid doing uh, any, anything that's going to cause that knight some problems. So my opponent having a bit of a think now. And if he moves this pawn, well, okay, my knight can at least come out, so I'm all right. If he tries to hold that with this move, then he can't play b3, right? So if he plays b4, which might not be terrible because he's just threatening to go here, then certainly these sacrifices to me look a lot stronger because my bishop's going to be opened up. But okay, so here, can we play this? Takes, takes. We get two bits for the piece and if he goes bishop b2 um, d3 bishop takes not quite working is it uh, I take here he takes here and I don't see it okay so he played the pawn forwards and um, now my knight always has this retreat so I've got a little bit of time here 
because okay taking does worsen my pawn structure but maybe I should really be trying to open things up now because his position is also a bit funny uh, so I'm gonna I think f6 is a very natural way to break those pawns down before he can get fully developed so I'm gonna play this move this just seems instinctively correct I have I've noticed given this square for the knight so could be instinctively rubbish <laughs> or tactically rubbish uh, I played that move a little bit quickly uh, but if he does take here which I should have calculated before playing because I thought I had something like queen b6 but then he flicks in pawn takes pawn and he's distracting my queen away from this square so if he takes here what do I play well, maybe just castling is not terrible is it the knight comes in queen comes here and let's say he takes 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 castles do we have okay maybe he throws in this move I throw in here castles the pawn down and he's getting ready to develop so it doesn't look ideal that I have to admit so if he takes can we take here knight in and then let's say uh, queen b6 again he takes here king f7 is his knight trapped let's say he flicks in this move I take here that looks better and if he takes back I have to take here and then he castles do we have compensation then well, I can win my pawn back while my dart squares are very weak. So knight takes here, I've certainly underestimated just because I missed I missed the weakness of the square. I'm thinking I could even go king f7, but then he goes e6 check uh, and my king has to go somewhere a bit silly and I lose a lot of time. It might be all right because I've got f5, my bishop coming out, but it doesn't seem right. So here takes here quite annoying for me actually of course he's played it um, bastard <laughs> I mean there's ridiculous ideas like castling here but I don't really believe it so let's just check that one line which look maybe all right here put my queen on such a bad square here takes here there's knight can come it looks a bit dodgy for me come here takes and then queen g4 and I come back and he takes it doesn't really look that inspiring for me can I stop him castling though so takes here 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 I think I'm trapping his knight you see but if he just plays a normal move like takes takes um, so actually hang on a minute what shouldn't should I be taking on a6 there to stop these ideas of him flicking this move in then his rook comes in I mean b6 seems so slow takes and his rook comes in because this move is always quite annoying for me takes here okay anything else I don't want to come back to defend it king f7 may be playable but it looks no we're gonna we're gonna have to take this one we I think we have to do this you know looking at the other lines I don't even need to calculate this that deeply I've maybe made a bit of a mistake I don't need to calculate this one deeply because the other lines just look so bad so even if this is bad if you've got an option between multiple bad moves you obviously take the bad move which is um, the best bad move <laughs> and my idea is I'm trapping his knight um, but um, I have to say that uh, you know I, I'm not liking the dark square so he, he's moving my queen away I have to take that one my rook was on pre and maybe now just something like this and bishop b2 is, is kind of what I'm scared about uh, to be honest here like I, I can't lose my knight so is that just a very bad for me maybe this is just very bad for me now going very bad sorry about the noise out there that would be uh, you know happens okay and this is another option isn't it where I've got to take and try to use my king okay well I can't allow that piece to survive can I so let's grab that one and this is looking very bad now we'll have a look afterwards where I went wrong in this very complex game I mean he's only attacking with the queen at the moment so I've still got some survival chances but uh, it looks very grim I'm, I'm thinking that if my king finds a home around these two squares I might be all right 
Okay, so he's kicking my knight away. This is what I thought he'd do a while back. Now, can I go queen here first? Let's flick this move in, just so I want to stop him castling. Queen exchange should help me because my king is weak. And uh, I want to sort of, uh, you know, just uh, um, play without those issues. So, okay, so this one I missed and uh, it was looking bad already. I think we're gonna have to resign that one. Not very impressive game for myself. Um, let's just have a look where we went wrong there. Uh, I think uh, that, that would make sense. So we'll do a little game review and uh, just see how it turns out. I'll just put it on the, the big screen. My opponent, well, I mean, I, I didn't play very accurately, but with my opponent's accuracy there, uh, sorry, I just lost the screen of 94%. It's always going to be a bit tricky, isn't it? So let's just have a look and see where I went wrong. This is what you should always do. So we put this here, and um, well, my opponent didn't play any bad moves, just three slight inaccuracies. And um, we we'll go down, just have a look very quickly at some of these mistakes. So D5 is a mistake here. Um, okay, interesting. What should I play here? Uh, da, 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 da. D5, let's just do the analysis. I find this a little bit easier to, to work out. So D6 was better, okay. Uh, I'll just check my opponent out as well. Let's just see. How, how he is on his various, oh no, I didn't mean to report. No, 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 no. I just want to see what his rating are. How do we do that? Can we look at his profile? Here we go. 2020, how do we look at his profile? Here, uh, I don't know how to do this, so. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Well, he certainly played um, very well, didn't he? Much higher accuracy than uh, uh, other games that he's played. And I'm just trying to uh, find out what his rating is. Um, so I should know how to do this somehow. But he played very well, so all, all credit to him. How do we do that? Uh, da, 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 da. Is, there a, is there a way to do that? I don't know, I don't know. I'll have to look it up afterwards. Um, yeah, so I mean, not not very impressive game. Um, bit disappointing. He played this interesting A4 move in the opening. Kind of threw me a little bit. And uh, the computer's right that this was maybe a little bit funny. Uh, D6 makes a lot more sense, but after this move, guess we just have to come back and that seems fine let's go forwards a little bit so knight c4 again i'm not sure if that was correct knight d7 i'm a little bit worse my opponent played a perfect move here bishop a4 check and actually here it's quite a weird position after f4 there, it, it seems like there was no good way to get that knight out of trouble and I should be sacrificing a pawn. Ah, that's a very clever idea. I missed this idea that you castle and after b3, e3 my knight comes in and after this move we then play d3. I missed this idea. Had I seen this idea, I think I'd be quite happy. And the point being, let's say he takes here, I've got this move. That was a concept I just missed. And I'd definitely have gone for that had I, had I seen that. And after queen c7, a6, it's actually very difficult for me. Uh, and this one, well, I think I'm just losing here. I kind of missed the strength for this move. So I didn't didn't put up a particularly good fight. And it just shows you that, you know, even an experienced player like myself, you can get tricked in the opening. And I was maybe not taking this idea seriously enough. Uh, and just looking at, what I, another thing I should be doing maybe this is the way to play but how, how else how else did it go wrong well e5 very interesting but this knight d5 my knight got in a lot of trouble there didn't it so the computer's actually saying that this was the best move interesting I suppose I mean I, I uh, because I was worried about f4 
because otherwise I win a central pawn. But actually, after f4, my knight always has this way back, doesn't it? And my, it was just my knight. This was the one thing. My knight got kicked around a lot. And as the computer says, this is much better. This d6 move is key because I never really, when I played it, I went a little bit too far to break that pawn up. As soon as I get rid of this pawn, I'm doing well. So I should get rid of the bishop and then play d6. And this this is this is definitely the way to go when I'm, if anything, I expect a little bit better now. H3 is not a problem. My knight can slip back here. And the point being, at some point, as the computer uh, says, well, you can't see the computer assessment, but as it says, he has to take here and I'm a little bit better after this. And this is what the kind of structure I wanted. So I know where I went wrong there. Interesting opening. Uh, and I will know next time that everything I think I did was pretty good. But in this position, my knight got in a lot of trouble coming this way. Should have gone this way with, uh, with uh, yeah, I think a, a nice, nice game. And a point now, I either win this central pawn or I get to play d6, and I didn't play d6, so I got in trouble, and that was that. So well played to my opponent, uh, and quite a tough long play game, but we'll take the next one a bit more seriously and make sure we win the next one. Mm -hmm.